In this video, I'll share some of the best strategies which actually work so that you could use them to get your first data science job. And this is based on my 10 plus years of experience working in the industry, having been part of dozens of hiring committees, having conducted hundreds of candidate interviews. And in this video, I'll break down all the steps which are part of the hiring process. And for each step, I'll share some strategies and tips which you can use to maximize your chances of getting selected. So first, let's look at what the current job scenario for data science roles, especially for the junior ones, look like. So this is some screenshots from LinkedIn where I have searched for data science roles and I've applied the experience of associate or entry level. And this is across the United States. So if you could see the number of applicants for some of these jobs here. So if you look at the first job here, which is Applied Machine Learning Scientist 2 in Washington, DC, you can see that there are 1,129 applicants for this role and 15 applicants just apply in the last day. Same, similarly, if you look at this on-site role in New York for machine learning developer, there are 5,308 applicants for this role. Now looking at Intuit role in New York, and this is again an on-site role. It does not have easy apply. Usually whenever a job has easy apply feature in LinkedIn, it gets many more applicants. And generally remote jobs get much more applicants. This does not have easy apply, but still it has 1,238 applicants. And similarly, when we look at this data scientist role at Vantage Score, again in New York City, there are 1,735 roles. So based on this, you can see that any job which is junior friendly for data scientists and has been in the market for some time, generally there are 1,000 plus applicants for that job. If you are actively looking for data science jobs, you might want to check my Data Science Accelerator program. This is an exclusive program Program where I select very few students and I work with them to help them land their first data science job or internship. And that is 100% guaranteed. If you get selected for the program, you'll get two times weekly calls with me in a small group setting and a monthly one-on-one -on -one call with me as well. And I'll go over your resume, your LinkedIn, your cover letters, and I'll help you narrow down the scope of your applications to the companies which are most likely to respond back to you. And not only that, I'll assess the weak spots in your technical knowledge and we'll do the mock interviews to make sure that you are fully prepared and confident when it comes to the interviews and you have a very good chance of clearing those interviews. And the best part is that the entire program is on a pay per result basis, which means that after the program, if you still do not get a data science job, you will get your entire money back, which makes it a zero risk decision for you. I work with very carefully selected, very few people. So if you are interested in learning more about the program, please check out the link in the description below. If you look at the funnel of how the hiring process works, we can see that there are different stages. The first stage is that when all the applicants apply, and at that stage, we can see that there are 1,000 plus applicants, generally for most roles. Then the next step is of HR screening. So in that stage, HR generally tries to do some filtering on their own. Usually it happens because some criteria in terms of number of years of experience, in terms of location, in terms of different skill set are passed on from the hiring manager and team lead. So the recruiter does some screening on their end before they pass on the resumes to the hiring manager or the tech lead. So generally recruiters or HR people do some screening on their end before they pass on the resumes to hiring manager or the tech lead. Some HRs even send some take home assessments and these take home assessments have automated scores. So that is also their way of filtering candidates because if there are 1000 plus applicants and we have seen in some jobs, for example, 5000 plus application, if the recruiter sends all of these to the hiring manager or tech lead, they just do not have enough time to go through all of that. So that is why the HR and the recruiting team try to do some pre-filtering at their end so that they do not pass on more than 200 to 300 applicants 
for the hiring manager and the tech lead so that they could do further filtering on top of that. So once you have passed through that HR screening and you are part of the 200 to 300 people whose resume actually get a chance to go through the eyes of hiring manager, at that stage, hiring manager, by looking at different things, they select about 12 to 15 people. And these are the shortlisted people which actually then get to the interviews. So we can see that starting from 1,000 total applicants, the people who actually get a chance to have any interview, it is just 12 to 15. And that is why the hard part nowadays is having an opportunity to actually get an interview because your odds there are one in 80. But once you get into that round and you are in the fortunate 12 to 15 people who have an opportunity to speak with the hiring manager or the team lead, then they do some filtering and eventually select about five to six people which they want to bring in for more detailed interview rounds. So these panel interviews generally are like four to five hours. You get an opportunity to speak with different people in the team. So they are very detailed and in length interviews. And out of that, one candidate is selected. So that is why when I look at this funnel, the numbers I want to keep in mind is that you start with 1000 applicants, then about 12 candidates generally get an opportunity to speak for interviews. And then out of that one candidate is selected. And you can see that the hard part is getting an interview because here your odds are one in 80. But once you get an interview, then your odds of landing a job are one in 12. Still not very good, but definitely much better. And that is why when possible, you should be focusing your attention on what you can do to actually land more interviews. Because if you keep getting more interviews, then that will give you an opportunity to practice and that will give you some feedback on maybe you are weak in this part or that part and you can focus on that. But if you do not hear back or not getting any interview calls at all, then there is no feedback in terms of what are the gaps in your knowledge or what can you do in the meantime to better prepare. So now let's look at what you can do in all these different stages of the interview to increase your odds of landing the job. So at the very top of the funnel, when you are competing against all the applicants, there are some tips which I would like to give you. First is that try to be in the early applicants. Your application should be in within 12 hours or maximum 48 hours of job posting. Because when recruiter and hiring manager, they post the jobs, generally for one to two days, they are very enthusiastic and they are actively looking at all the responses which they are getting. But once they have get 100 plus resumes and it has been a couple of days, then for anyone who comes after, HR recruiters and hiring managers, are not very actively looking at those resumes. So the number one tip would be be an early applicant. The second would, would be that for any role which is either remote or it has easy apply feature, I'm not saying you should not apply for that, but your odds of getting that job is very slim because there's just so much competition for those jobs and there are so many applications floating around for those. And the last thing which I would say is that it is better to have very clear idea of what kind of industry what kind of job you want to target and for that job you have a fully tailored resume a tailored application letter and then also send out some custom invites to the people who th you think could be in the decision making authority there then massively applying to hundreds of job every day it is much better to be much more targeted and apply to few jobs but apply them very well so this is again some screenshots from linkedin and here i have applied some more filters besides what i had applied previously so you can see here the jobs listed are only in the past week and also just on-site jobs. And you can see that the number of applicants for these roles which are posted recently and require people to come on site is much much better so you can see it is 75 for this role in mclean virginia for alexandria virginia about 50 roles all of them are in the past day so it means the jobs are pretty fresh this rutherford new jersey role 160 applicants it looks like the job was posted just a day ago because this is all the applicants they have received in the last day and then again a virginia role on site 43 applicants for this role so if you apply in the first 24 to 48 hours and the jobs are in person then at least you are in the first hundred candidates and the odds of your resume actually get seen by the hiring manager or the HR team are much higher. Once you have applied then the next step is that what you can do to pass the HR screening. One thing is that 
your resume has to have a lot of the keywords which they are asking for. Sometimes a lot of recruiters even rely on the keyword presence in the resume to filter out resumes. So make sure that your resume is customized. It has most of the keywords which are required for the job and they are in the job listing. The second thing is your resume is what is get seen the first thing. But if that looks good, then generally recruiters look at your LinkedIn profile and that should be in a top notch condition. Third thing which I generally very recommend is that if you are very mindful and targeted in your approach on what kind of companies you're trying, then also include a very customized cover letter on why you think you are a good fit for that position. Another thing you can do is that whatever roles you are applying for, Try to find, sometimes if you have LinkedIn Premium, it tells you what who is the recruiter for that job. So try to reach out to them, again, very politely, and again, mentioning that why you think you are a good fit for that role. But even if that is not present, but even if you are not able to find that recruiter through LinkedIn, see if you can find some hiring manager or some other person in the same similar team or company and try to reach out to them and tell them that you have applied for this role and why you think you are a good candidate for that role. Again, it is very important that you have a targeted approach and only apply to roles which are very relevant to your profile so that your odds of landing the job are maximum. And good communication is a key because in a lot of scenarios, if your profile looks good, HR generally gives you a call just to get a sense of what your experience been, how's your communication, are you a good fit for that company, that team. So try to have very polite and to the point good discussion with the HR person so that at least you are in that the pool of 200 to 300 people which the HR is recommending for next steps to the hiring manager. Now once you are in the front of the hiring manager, some of the things which they would be looking at is that do you have relevant experience in terms of what the problem they are trying to solve. So in a nutshell, they would be looking at what you have to offer versus what the role demands and how much is the overlap there. So your job is to first of all understand what the demanded role there is and then how can you project your experience to match with that. You have to demonstrate that you have good technical skill set and at that stage maybe you can highlight some of the portfolio projects which you have built and what are the things you have learned in SQL, Python, Pandas, Gen AI or whatever the role calls for. Good communication and showing that you are coachable and willing to learn is another very key important feature because no matter how good your profile is the role they are asking for or the problem they have in mind is going to be requiring some learning from your side. So if you show coachability and your desire to learn, then I think that gives a very clear and positive signal to the hiring manager that even if you don't know, but if you are willing to learn and you have the attitude to learn and then you can become a very good asset for the team. Also show enthusiasm about the role you're applying for, how you think that role is very important for you and why you think that you would be putting in your 110% into the role. So now if you succeed to all the stages, then you'll be in front of the panel where you would be speaking with different people in the team and have a chance to show different skill sets which you have so painfully acquired in the last so many months. Now, of course, this is generally an easier round because even if you don't perform like 100% in any of the roles, in any of one interview, then since there are multiple interviews happening, if you, you can, you have an opportunity to compensate for that in the other interview. So some things to keep in mind. First, this is the round about your technical strengths. So you will be gauged in detail about a lot of technical areas. So it could be ML, it could be statistics, it could be your Python knowledge. But the recruiter will give you an idea of what to expect in these interviews and be prepared for that because your technical depth is the number one thing which they are looking for. But beyond that, another thing which is very important is that how much structured thinking do you have? When you look at the problem, do you jump to the solution right away or do you try to clarify it and understand it? And what kind of question do you ask? So all these things give a very good sense to the interviewer that how systematic your thinking process is and how mature are the technical solutions which you are presenting in return. Another thing which they want to gauge, usually through the behavior around, 
but also in the technical rounds is that how good is your collaboration with other people? How much you are open to suggestions and feedback and try to course correct yourself according to that feedback. Companies generally do not want people who just have something in mind and are very rigid and just go for it. Companies want people who are very agile and very willing to learn and ask others about their feedback and adopt themselves. And the other thing you, you want to highlight in these rounds is your curiosity about how does their company work. And pretty much every interview ends with, do you have any questions for me? And at that stage, you have to ask some very pointed, some very good questions to demonstrate that you have a lot of curiosity and willingness to learn about the company and atmosphere and the team culture. So I hope if you apply all this steps in the funnel which I've shared with you, then even in today's tough tech job market, you'll have a very good odds of not only getting the interview calls, but also getting the offer which you are so desperately waiting for. If you like this video, I have another detailed guide on how you can use LinkedIn very precisely to get a job within 90 days. I have shared a full framework which I would use if I had to get another job in 90 days. Please check it out. I'm pretty sure you'll like it. Thank you so much for watching.